How's it going, YouTube? And it's the Graham. Welcome to Sterling on Cinemas. That's Cinemas with an S. If you are new to this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment on the section below, and most importantly, watch. Today, for the Pixar animation playlist, I'll be giving you my review on Finding Dory. Let's get started. Dory is a wide-eyed blue tang fish who suffers from short-term memory loss every 10 seconds or so. The one thing that she can remember is that she same, somehow became separated from her parents as a child. With help from her friends Nemo and Marlin, Dory embarks on an epic adventure to find them. Her journey brings her to the Marine Life Institute, a conservatory that houses diverse ocean species, including whale sharks, beluga whales, all sorts of types of fish, sea otters, seagulls, sea lions, you know the rest. But Dory now knows that her family reunion will only happen if she can save mom and dad from captivity being shipped off to Cleveland. Now this review may be very different from all of my other, all the other ones before because I'm be very honest. Like, I'm going to be too honest about this one. I feel as if Finding Dory does not really live up to the emotional weight that the first film carried throughout. And I don't think it's because Finding Nemo holds a special place in my heart. I think it's just, it doesn't feel, you don't really feel it as much. We know the character of Dory suffers from short-term memory loss, but rarely does she use this flaw to become an asset that drives the narrative forward. We still get a nice little adventure where our titular blue tang fish gets to shine as was the case with recent Pixar sequels where the sidekick takes center stage with the lead character from the previous entry takes the supporting role. Like how Mike Wazowski took center stage in University or how Mater took center stage in Cars 2. But the reason that I think the story did not feel as compelling to me was because of how we are, we are already aware of her flaw. I'm not saying that they should not have written Dory to be a fish with short-term memory loss to be a forgetful fish, but I think that if they decided to omit her mentioning of short-term memory loss, even though it was very clear throughout Finding Nemo, it would have helped the sequel a lot more because of her, because of her being the protagonist here and bringing up this important imperfection about herself a lot. The quality of adventure we get feels steady, but you would think that there is no race against time since Dory would put together the pieces in a very memento type of fashion because y'all remember I did the review on memento if y'all remember from Christopher Nolan, but she would keep forgetting the little things like, you know, directions, but she ain't remember, but she ain't forget about directions in the first one now, did she? The way the story handles emotion seems to only work in the context of Dory herself. The emotional and heartfelt moments came through flashbacks and echoes of her past. And even though she gets judged for something that she cannot control, there is not much emotion in those areas either, but rather the empathy that the audience expresses towards Dory. Because it should go without, because it should really go without saying that, that Dory is a character you can feel sorry for, even if you haven't really been there. That's what the empathy is. And another thing, the water animation stays is intangibly beautiful like i know most of these pixar sequels have better animation but i think i think out of all the pixar franchises so far the finding nemo franchise is the only animation that pretty much stays the exact same because that water animation is untouchable it's unparalleled with anything else because like the water animation in these movies never changes like it always it's always been the same since since the first entry like the, the water, the ocean animation feels exactly the same as it did in 2003, which was a breakthrough at its time. So, yeah. The characters in Finding Nemo were easy to get hooked up to. But it is sad that the cast of the characters in this one did not measure up to the charm and comedy that those characters had. I mean, in the first Finding Nemo, it was so many good characters to love. You had the sharks, you had the turtles, you had the, not those turtles, you had the, the shell turtles, the EAC turtles, you had the jellyfish, you had the trench, and then you had the fish from the dentist, you had the puffy fish, you had gill, you had the purple fish, you had the yellow fish, you had all those other different types of fish that brought a different thing to the table. But 
The supporting characters in Finding Dory were comical in their own right, but it is not like each character adds a different layer. Dory's constant memory care, constant memory failure was kind of something that the audience felt sorry about in the first movie, like I said before, but it was not the focus, but more of a funny way to showcase that Marlon's search for Nemo was going to be harder than anybody anticipated. In Finding Dory, the central character's flaw is given a lot more emphasis as this is how she would piece back together solid jigsaw puzzles along with some flashbacks in order to find her parents. Marlon and Nemo may be important players in this Pixar franchise, but they were treated just like every other supporting character, in my opinion. The way I see it, there is a difference between supporting characters that are the foundation of a franchise and original supporting characters. And Finding Dory is one of those sequels with original supporting characters. The original supporting characters in Finding Dory that were compelling enough are Destiny the Whale Shark and Bailey the Beluga Whale. These are two characters that are under the same umbrella as Dory. Although it was cool to meet Hank the Octopus who can camouflage and shapeshift and run into the only familiar face we have seen, which are the turtles. The only, the only characters from the first one to come back in this supporting characters. Destiny and Bailey are characters who Dory can relate to, thus being loved by the audience because Destiny has stigmatism. He's, she's nearsighted and Bailey has echolocation malfunction. So those are two dysfunctionalities that she can that she has in common with, even though it may not be those exact two things. Those are three fish with their own respective issue. Finding Dory currently sits at a 94% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Finding Dory may not have felt like the Maverick success that was Finding Nemo, which was in 2003. But it was able to stand on its own fins with a self-contained story arc and original supporting characters. Finding Nemo is unforgettable, but Finding Dory feels faithful, even if it doesn't measure up to its predecessor. So I will give it 7.3 SOs out of 10. It's, it's down there with a bug's life. Like I said, all the Pixar movies are good. They're enjoyable enough, but some are better than others. Let's just be honest. Some movies are better than others. Like, everybody loves the Toy Story franchise more than most of these other franchises. But I said my favorite Pixar franchise is The Incredibles, even though I love all the other Pixar franchises. But so far, this one is down there with A Bug's Life. But that is my review on Finding Dory. Y'all can let me know what y'all guys think of this sequel in particular in the comment section below. Because I don't know if I'm one of the few people that have a dislike for the movie. May not favor the movie as much as the other one. But y'all can let me know what y'all feel in the comments down there. So I'll see y'all next time. I'll see y'all tomorrow with my video on Way Back Wednesday. Peace out.